Good morning, everyone. Again, I pray for you today that you know and understand the love that the Father has for you. We've been talking about the fact that we are beloved of the Father, that we're the children of God, that we're loved by God as he loves Jesus. That's an amazing thing because we're not God. We're not Jesus. Yet God says, I love you as I love my son. Understand that because our belovedness should change our lives, how we think about ourselves, how we live amongst others, the things that we've done in the past. Remember, because God loves us, he has forgiven us. Because we are forgiven, we no longer have to walk in shame and blame. Being loved is a wonderful thing. Because it gives you confidence. It helps you to know that you belong to someone. That there's strength there. There is encouragement there. So understand and know that the Father is there and wants you to understand and know that he is there with you and for you. We've been looking at this wonderful song by Tony Wood, Michael Farron, Ben Sheev, and Sarah Kroger. We had the first half of the song yesterday by owning your past, but owning your belovedness. Because when we are beloved, we can let go of those things that have the strange stranglehold on us. They are the traumas of our past, the traumas of our lives that have held us captive because they become changed. They become things that we're so used to. They become in some ways an invisible knapsack, an invisible backpack or computer bag that we have. We carry them with us everywhere we go. But God says, you're mine. I smiled when I made you, and I find you beautiful in every way. My love for you is fierce and unending. I'll come to find you, whatever it takes. Let that roll around in your head. I let that roll around in my head. Because again, God, do you love me? Yes. I mentioned this before. One of my favorite uh, singers is a gentleman by the name of Wintley Phipps. And he has this wonderful song, Tell Me Again That You Love Me. I can feel when at first we start to drift apart and emptiness takes hold of my wounded heart. But there you are to love me again. Here's the rest of the song. You've owned the mess you see in the mirror. You've owned the lies that you're just not good enough. You've been so blind by all you're comparing. It's time to own your beloved mess. The mess in the mirror. We look in the mirror sometimes and we go, why me? How come? Why am I this way? Why? Why? We ask those question. Admit it. You do. Even as adults, we do. Young people, we do. Young people are trying to figure out who we are. As older folks, we found it so should know who we are. But we still look in the mirror. And we go, what a mess. Because all that is is the enemy telling us that you're not loved by the Father. All that is is the enemy attacking you. But the Father says, no. I love you. You are not a mess. And besides... You're my mess. I had a dear friend named Charlotte. Charlotte would come in and say, I'm a mess maker. She used a little kind of different colorful language. And I tell her, yeah, but you're my mess maker. Why? Because I loved her. And that's what the father says. You are mine. I will straighten out the mess in your life. And then you've owned the lies that you're just not good enough. Those lies come to us when we compare. Those lies come to us because there's nothing more than the enemy trying to speak into your life and tell you, you're not worthy. There's nothing with you. Read Galatians. You'll figure out that you're, particularly Galatians 3, you'll figure out that you are worthy. Why? Because Jesus has come for you. Jesus says, I will find you. Why? Because you are good enough. One of the things I have young people do and adults and, and different circumstances, I have them take a post-it note. And to put that post-it note on your rearview mirror in the car, 
set that post-it note in the mirror in, in the restroom when you get up in the morning because it's going to say you are good enough you are worthy you are loved why because we need that constant reminder i have dear friends sometimes we're deep in conversation and things are going on they say just tell me you love me i'm fine because we want the constant encouragement why because god says you're good enough and that we're loved You've been so blinded by your comparing, the song says. Why do we compare ourselves? Part of it is our own, own jealousy, but part of it too is our own insecurity. The insecurities that come from whatever reasons, from culture, from who we are, the way we think about ourselves. Remember the first part of the song, what we think about ourselves. All of those things should change because it's time to own possess, live in your belovedness. God says this, and I love this line. You're mine. I smiled when I made you. I find you beautiful in every way. My love for you is fierce and unending. I will come to find you, my beloved. Here's the next line. You are completely loved and fully known. Oh my. Completely loved, yes. Fully known. God, you don't know the mess I'm not, I am. Yeah, no, we're God's mess. He straightens it out. Oh, but you don't know what I've done. God says, I forgive your past. Stop letting that, take that thing out of your backpack. You don't need that anymore. But God, but God, but God, but God, oh God, no, no. God says, listen, you are completely known, fully known. And I love you anyway, because my love for you is fierce. I smiled when I made you. Beloved, believe he died to make your heart his home. If Jesus is in my heart and his heart is my home, I am loved. I am completely loved and fully known. He smiled when he made you. He smiled when he made us. Why? Because he loves us intensely. He loves us fiercely. He loves us forever. My love for you is fierce and unending. I'll come to find you, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. God says, I love you that much, whatever it takes. Many of us have had loved ones who were ill and needed this care, that care, operation, that kind of thing. And we were willing to do whatever it took to bring healing and restoration into their lives. I have one dear friend who moved his family completely across country from San Francisco to South Carolina so that his daughter could receive the kind of care that she needed. They got there and the father provided for them. And that young lady is doing quite well. He did whatever it took to love his child. The father does that for us as well. Whatever it takes, I'm willing to do to let you know that I love you. Why? Here's the chorus again. Let this live in you today. You are mine. I smiled when I made you. I find you beautiful in every way. My love for you is fierce and unending. I'll come to find you, whatever it takes, my beloved. Friends, it's time to own your belovedness, the Father loving you. Lord Jesus, we bless you and thank you that you love us this way. Lord, thank you for doing whatever it takes to show us your love for us. These things, Father, we pray in the holy, the mighty, and the blessed name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Be blessed today, my dear friends.